grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship this day here at First United Methodist Church. My name is Ricky Sandiford, one of the pastors here, and we gather to worship and to honor God this day. And so I want to say a word of welcome to you. Uh, if this is the first time you're joining with us online, thank you so much. Uh, comment, let us know that you're here. Uh, it is a blessing to gather in the, in the house of God here and together because God is gathered with you in your home or wherever you may happen to be this morning. Uh, and so as we worship the Lord this day, uh, may God pour his blessing upon us that we may honor and glorify God for all of God's blessings in our life. And so as we gather for worship this day, friends, uh, let's take a moment and prepare our hearts and minds to worship the Lord. join together in this morning's call to worship. We encourage you to follow along with the words on the screens. Raise your voices in response to God's goodness. We praise you, O Lord, for all the blessings you have given us. Lift your hearts in sweet surrender to God's mercy. We thank you, O Lord, for hearing the prayers of our hearts. God is good. Praise be to God. This love and mercy of God never fails. Amen. Oh, oh, oh. 
Now I invite Miss Leanne to come and all the children uh, to please come for their time this morning. Thank you. Hi, kids. Last week, we ended with the three L's. Look, listen, and love. The three L's, the ways God's Spirit comes to us to get our attention and how he wants us to reach out to people. Well, God did just that with the prophet Ezekiel. You see, Ezekiel was hanging out by the river one day, and God's Spirit came to him in a big way. It was as though a mighty storm was coming, and God was saying, look. Then there was a great bright cloud with fire flashing all over it and lots of other strange things. Ezekiel cried out, this must be the glory of the Lord. When he saw all of this, he fell to the ground and then he heard a voice speaking to him. The voice of God said, Get up, Ezekiel. I'm sending you to my people. They are in a real mess. Don't be afraid. They're a stubborn people with hard hearts. But I have made you strong and tough, and I will be with you. God told Ezekiel to listen to his words and let them go deep into his heart. Then go to the people and tell them to listen to what the Lord says. God gave Ezekiel all kinds of ways to get the people to listen. God told him to lie on his left side for 390 days for the 390 years of the Israelites' wrongdoings. And then he told him to turn over to the right side for 40 days one day for each of the 40 years of Judah's wrongdoings. God gave Ezekiel all kinds of messages to tell the people. God was not going to give up on them. He wanted them to know that when we obey him, we can have a life of joy. Bad things do happen. Unexpected things happen too. God's Spirit took hold of Ezekiel and took him to a valley of bones. So strange. Why would God do that? God wanted Ezekiel to know how much he loves his people. God told Ezekiel to speak his words to the bones and to say this, Dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. And then God breathed his spirit into those dry bones, and those dead bones came alive. Soon, they were a company of people all around. And God told Ezekiel, My people are like these dry bones, but they will live again one day. I will breathe new life into them and bring them home and give them a new beginning. And he sure did. In Jesus. Have a good week, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Let us join together in this morning's corporate prayer of confession. Let us join together. O oh God of grace, abounding in love unlimited, we thank you for your infinite mercy. It has been the source of our life and faith through all our days, and before that, through the days of our ancestors. We thank you, dear Lord, that where sin abounds, Grace much more abounds. You call us to be a priestly people and a holy nation, but we, like lost sheep, go astray. Forgive us, O oh God, for our betrayal of your call. Open our ears that we might hear your commandments and transform our hearts that we might keep your covenant. Let us now as when we first believed, exclaim, all that the Lord has spoken we will do and we will be obedient. As we think of your other sheep who have gone astray, we think of ourselves as your instruments for bringing them home. If they tarry for a sympathizing tear, let us shed it without shame. 
If they wait for a soothing word, let us speak it without hesitation. If they desire a cup of water, let us offer it without delay. If they hunger for a decent meal, let us provide it without suspicion. Make us the instruments of your grace in speech and in action. We pray in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. positive thing when our anger is appropriate and when it's not uh, and and this week you know we, we deal with the question that God asks of Ezekiel uh, and so I'm going to read to you this day uh, from Ezekiel chapter 37 uh, this vision that Ezekiel's had uh, the first 14 verses and we're going to read it from from a translation by Rabbi author uh, Wesco who translated it right from Hebrew uh, the vividness of this translation captured uh, my attention uh, and, and moved my spirit this week. And so uh, I want you to hear this word of God from Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of Yahweh, the breath of life, was on me. 
And in a rushing breath, Yahweh brought me forth and set me in the center of a valley full of bones and led me all around them, all around. Here, very many on the face of the valley and here, utterly dry. And said to me, child of Adam, earthly, can these bones live? I said, pillar of the world, breath of life, you know it in your heart, and only you. Then God said to me, prophesy upon these bones. Say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the one who breathes all life. Thus speaks the pillar of the world, the breath of life to these bones. Here, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will weave muscles on you and raise flesh upon you. I will give you breath, and you shall live. And so you will deeply know that I am Yahweh, the breath of life. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And while I was prophesying, there came a voice and here a commotion. And the bones came together, bone to bone. And I saw here upon them muscles. Flesh arose, skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then God said, prophesy to the rushing breath of wind. Prophesy, you child of earth, and say to the breathing wind. Thus says the pillar of the world, the breath of life. From the four breathing winds come, O breath, and puff upon these slain that they shall live. So I prophesied as God commanded me, and blew, and the breath blew into them. They lived and stood upon their feet. An overwhelming, overwhelming, vast array of strength. Then God said to me, child of earth, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Here, they say, dried up our bones, shattered our hopes, cut off our roots. So prophesy and say to them, thus says the pillar of the world, the breath of life. Here I will open your graves and rouse you from your graves, my people. And I will bring you to the earth of Israel. And you shall know deep in your heart that I am Yahweh, the breath of life. That I have opened your graves and roused you from your graves, my people. And I will put my breath in you. You shall live, and I will place you on your own earth, and you shall know deep in your heart that I, the breath of life, have spoken and made it happen, proclaims the breath of life. May God bless the hearing, the understanding of his holy word. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your precious sight, we pray. Amen. You know, when I was a boy growing up in Kipner United Methodist Church, a small church in Kipner, Texas, uh, they had a tradition in that church where they had monthly fellowship suppers, potluck suppers. You know, we'd go down on a Friday night or a Saturday night, uh, and there everybody would, would bring their, their dishes. And let me tell you, small churches, they, they know how to do potluck dinners. And we had, we had a wonderful time. And so we would, we would eat our fill of all kinds of good food and enjoying the company. And then after, after everybody was finished eating, maybe they had their desserts and, and maybe a cup of coffee if you were an adult, uh, somebody would say, I can remember Max Bennett saying, uh, or Morgan Pickett saying somebody then would, would comment and they would go, well, it's about time to shake up those bones. And of course, what they were referring to was getting out the dominoes because the adults that gathered together, they loved to play dominoes. They would play 42 or 84 or just straight dominoes uh, and, and they would spend a couple hours 
uh, playing dominoes after they ate. And of course, anybody that plays dominoes, you know if, if you're playing with just two and you've got this pile of dominoes left over here uh, that, 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 that's not using and you have to draw because you cannot play, you know what that pile of dominoes over here is, right? You probably know, don't you, Robert? What you call that pile of dominoes that's left over. Yeah. That's called the bone pile. So you got to draw out of the bone pile. See? Ezekiel, he ex had his own experience of, of being in a bone pile. I mean, for him, it was a whole valley full of bones. It was a bone yard full of bones, this whole valley. Now to understand what's going on here, you need to remember that Ezekiel was the, was the prophet of the exile. Uh, Ezekiel had been taken off from, from Jerusalem, from Israel to Babylon. He was a contemporary of Jeremiah, but Jeremiah was left behind uh, in uh, Jerusalem. And Ezekiel then was taken off with a whole bunch of other uh, Israelites to Babylon. And there, he experienced this series of visions from God. And so he would share these visions. I mean, you get the idea that, that the Spirit of the Lord you know, is almost overcoming uh, on him. Uh, you read this in, in verse 3 of chapter 1 of Ezekiel. The Lord's word burst in on the priest Ezekiel. There, the Lord's power overcame him overcame him so he had no choice you know but but to but to utter these prophecies as god had called him to do and so through ezekiel we get this experience of this vast valley this this vast barren valley full of bones sun bleached utterly dry bones they were the symbol of death and destruction. They were the symbol of hopelessness and dreams shattered. Because that was Israel's experience in the exile. I mean, let us pause in, in the midst of this valley that we find ourselves in for a moment. Let, let's think together, my friends. Where else in Scripture... Have you heard about a valley like this? About a valley of death? Can you think about where that might be? Sure, many of you can. Yeah, we, we call it the Psalm of the Good Shepherd or Psalm 23. Remember how that goes? Put that up on the screen. The Lord is my shepherd. Read it with me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want... He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. See, there it is. The valley of the shadow of death. See, there, there's no shadow in Ezekiel's vision. I mean... It is the sun beating down day after day on that image of death and despair. Can you imagine the heat in that valley with the sun beating down on it every day? So it's in the midst of this vision then that God asked Ezekiel a question. And he says, O oh mortal, can these bones live again? Now, how would you answer that if God asked you that question? You know? And you got to be careful. I mean, if you answer and say, well, no, they're dead, God, uh, then, then God might say, what, you have no faith in me and what I can do? Or if you said, sure, God, they'll live again, and God might tell you, well, you know something that I don't know? No, I thought Ezekiel answered just right. You know, when he said, when he said, God, on, on, only you know <laughs> the answer to that. Only you know the answer that. So I just want to say a couple of things about this vision. And the first is this. You need to remember that 
Israel saw themselves in this valley of dry bones. They saw themselves. It was their experience. I mean, th th this valley represented the nation of Israel who had turned away from God and who had turned away from God's desires for them. This represented Israel no, no longer resonating with hopeful and joyful spirit of God. No. This is Israel who had rejected their creator and their sustainer. This is Israel now cut off from God, disconnected from God. See that scene in the valley? That's the state of the soul without being connected to God, to its creator. Shriveled up, dried up, lifeless, brittle. And I'm wondering, folks, you know, are you feeling any sort of disconnect today? Disconnect from God? Or maybe disconnected from one another? Is your soul feeling small, dried up, kind of brittle? See, now I, I realize what playing dominoes was all about for my parents' generation. It wasn't just a way to, to while away a couple of hours. And it wasn't about winning or losing whatever particular game they were playing. It was all about connection. Connection with others. Connection with brothers and sisters in Christ. It was about connection. That's the only way we can truly be the church of God. It brought a spiritual vitality and joy to your life to be connected with others. But also it brought that same spirit of joy and vitality to the body of Christ. They became truly alive when they were connected with one another. And that's what they did. I can still remember, you know, I mean, I was too young to play. They wouldn't let us play, you know, but we would, I'd walk around the tables and, and look and hear you know, the, the laughter and the stories being told, they were connecting one with another. And through that connection, they were also strengthening their connection with God. If you're not connected to God, then you truly are dead. Dead as a pile of dried up, sun bleached bones. So, how is it? with your soul today? You know, that, that's a basic question you know, that John Wesley wanted uh, everybody to ask in their small groups and in their, in their class meetings when they would get together, you know, is how is it with your soul? So how is it, I'm asking you, in the midst of this pandemic that we find ourselves in, in the midst of this social distancing that we find ourselves in, how is it with your soul are you feeling some disconnection? I'm not sure anybody thought this would go on as long as it has. Has it become burdensome to you? Are you feeling disconnected, separated, maybe from your family or from your normal work schedule, your colleagues, your school mates, even your church? Even God? How is it with your soul? I mean, I know some, may, they may feel lost. They may feel like they have lost part of their connections. Connections to others and connections to God. I think there are those out there who are feeling their soul is kind of shriveling up and becoming more brittle because of that. You know, if you think back to the Psalm 23, the Psalm of the Good Shepherd, it says, you know, in there that, yea, though I walk through the shadow, the valley of death. And if you keep reading, remember what it says? I will fear no evil. Why? 
because thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. They comfort me. You see, the Psalm 23 is good news. And Ezekiel is good news as well. That vision is good news. God is going to give his people new life. He's going to breathe into them God's breath. Now, why is God going to do that? It's not because Israel deserves it. They've done nothing to deserve God, you know, giving them new life and reviving them. God is doing it because God loves. And God always takes the first step offering life and joy and peace. God initiates that invitation. God took that step in the gift of Jesus Christ in his birth and and life and ministry and death and resurrection and ascension in Jesus Christ. God has invited us to make that connection with him, to allow our souls to connect with, with the creator. So we have that opportunity. But, but notice, then, get notice how life comes to these bones. Okay? Uh, let me read just uh, a couple of, couple of verses again from, from Ezekiel. Then God said to me, prophesy upon these bones. Say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the one who breathes all life. Thus says the pillar of the world, the breath of life to these bones, hear. I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And while I was prophesying, there came a voice here, a commotion, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Then here's the second thing that I want you to hear this day. Ezekiel had a role to play in God's life-giving ministry. Bones didn't come to life. They didn't get breath. They they didn't get sinews. They didn't get flesh. They didn't get muscles until what? Until Ezekiel had obeyed God and shared the prophecy of God, shared the word of God. And so here's the truth, folks, that I want you to see. Just as Ezekiel had a part to play in God's life-giving plan, we have a part to play in God's giving, life-giving plan in Jesus Christ. We are called to share the good news. We are called to allow the Ruha, God's Spirit, to flow through us and to those around us. And so I would say to you, Today, that today is the perfect day, and now is the perfect time to shake up those bones, to get out there and, and to share. Because people, people are feeling disconnected this day. Get out there and share with them. Give them a call on the phone, send them a text, you know, give them an email, connect with them online have to, but let them know that they are not alone and that God loves them and that God has loves them enough to send his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross so that they could have that connection with God and with brothers and sisters of the faith. Not, not just today and not just tomorrow, but forever. Yeah, folks, it's dim bones. They need life. Life is found in Jesus Christ. So let's shake up the bones. Let's join with God in God's life-giving ministry to the world. Folks, let's join together in prayer. Gracious God, we are so grateful that we have the opportunity, the opportunity to be your people, the opportunity, 
Lord, to follow you, that you have invited us to come and be on mission with you. You have said, come on and join me. Because I need your help. I want your help. And so, Lord, we have the opportunity to share your love. We have an opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, help us to recognize what a privilege that is and what a gift that you have given to us. And so, on this day, God, when we know that there are so many people out there in the midst of this pandemic who are not sure what the future holds, Maybe they've lost their job. Maybe they lost loved ones in the midst of this pandemic. Maybe they're, they're not sure what tomorrow or next week or next month or next year is going to bring. Use us, O oh God, to speak a word of truth and a word of hope and a word of joy that is found in Jesus Christ to those folks who need to hear who need to strengthen their connection with your church and with you. Oh God, I pray your blessing to be upon those who have lost loved ones, those who have had to gather in hospitals, not being able to see their family. I pray, Lord, for those who are wondering What comes next? For the opportunity we have, gracious God, to be your people and to be part of your church, we offer you our praise and thanks. We glorify you, Lord, and honor you in all that we do. Come, O Lord, and continue to bless us as a church that we may be a blessing for others. We are grateful, Lord, that you are here among us and that you have breathed into us that life-giving breath that only comes from you. For all these things, O God, we pray in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Therefore, we will not fear. and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Therefore, we will not fear. city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. 
goddess in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved, God will help when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar, the kingdoms of men have tottered, God thunders, the earth melts, the God of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, therefore we will not fear, therefore we will not fear. It's our refuge and our strength. And thank you, Carlos. Amen. Friends, thank you for your continued support. The ministry here at First United Methodist Church. Tomorrow is, is our food pantry day. Uh, and Susan told me that we are preparing for uh, at least 120 families uh, to come through and to get food uh, here. So thank you so much for your continued support of the ministry of this church. We could not do it without you. Uh, and so please, uh, as, as you give, uh, you can give online uh, or you can send, send a check in the mail uh, to the church office. Uh, but your support is needed and much appreciated. So now, sisters and brothers, as we go forth out into the world this day, we go forth to shake up them bones. We go forth that God may bless us, that we may bless others. So go forth with the peace of God. Go forth with the love of God. Go forth with the Spirit of God blowing among us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless.